All right, so the new co-op shooter Synced released almost about a week ago. And I've been putting in quite a few hours between now and back in beta test to see what the potential of this game holds. And honestly, for a free to play game, I can say I quite like the base model of it so far. It's a blend of a few different genres merged into one with elements coming from the likes of looter shooters, roguelites, battle royales, and just to top it all off, gacha. But you can earn everything that you need for free, so keep that in mind. So what exactly is there to do in Synced? Well, let's have a deeper look into that end game PVE content and what you're able to expect. Let's go and start off with the power level. This will be one of the biggest points of interest as you progress. Complete your missions that have a recommended icon above them will help you grow your power as you collect runner mods, which can be used to equip and change your builds or used as fusion to increase your total power score in which will help you deal more damage and receive less damage. So this system here seems very similar to the likes of Destiny 2's light level, if you understand that comparison. From there, the missions that you'll be mostly focusing on will flex between, well, two the elite runs category and then the master ops plus category so let's start off with those er's first elite runs are quite tough the first time you encounter them unlike your typical runs where you can vendor your exchange mods on the go the elite runs are based on intervals when you first load into them you'll meet your combat preparation screen with mod selections and your gears and supplies to choose between you will honestly have quite a limited amount of radio currency to spend so you can see the toughness from here as you then go jump into the mission you'll be met with waves of enemies to progress your way through with a tyrant or two standing in your way and if doing so successfully when defeating the final tyrant you'll collect the key like item called an ops mark now these are what you're going to be needing to access the master ops plus content so elite runs will also scale for example we can see here tier one it then proceeds with a one one a one two and a one three with a one four in completing these runs you'll access the tier two elite runs now this pattern goes on and on until elite runs five and then from there, as you can see at the top, you'll have a hard version of this and then finally an endless version of this as well. Every week, Elite Runs tow up your top three runs into a ranking and reward system, where the better that you do, the better rewards that you will earn from it. So this gives it more of a competitive edge to perform the best that you can as you progress through them. Now you have your Mark Ops key. We can now enter the Master Ops Plus content. And by this time, you should somewhat have an understanding on the enemy types that already exist within the game, because if you don't already by now, oh my god you'll be learning a lot on how to work around their advantages and disadvantages especially the bosses the master ops plus missions will provide you with two free daily entries but after those whenever you enter these missions whether you succeed or fail you will use up that key mark so don't feel discouraged by this because even with failure you can progress just keep bashing your head against the wall and sooner or later the wall will show damage to it when entering the missions they are going to be the usual normal missions that you're used to but these missions are timed so you're not only racing the surge level difficulty but now you're also racing the timer duration to get everything completed and throughout each level you are going to be visited by a challenging foe which is basically a tyrant that that's going to cause trouble and slow things down personally i do like this approach because it can add to the chaos and challenge difficulties choosing whether or not they're worth your time to fight or not or get the extra rewards that they do go and drop and when you finally reach the third and final level stage you won't just be facing one final tyrant boss no no this is where the game actually gets interesting and personally this is the most enjoyment I've had within the PvE structure of the game so far. Combining bosses together and making you pay attention to the mechanics, or just the chaos and the hecticness of boss positions, really adds to the fun side of things and also the frustrating sides. So if you do like this challenge, this is for you, this is the target audience. Upon competing the likes of the Master Op missions, for example, you can now go and gain the chances of getting some legendary weapon blueprints. This is where you'll be slowly building these up and unlocking some of the best in slot weapons in the game. Weapons from rare rarity and above all come with the possibility to augment. Now, to put this simply, this makes weapons pew pew harder and better. On the outer ring of the weapon augments is where you'll spend your chips currency that you obtain throughout playing synced. So shotgun chips will be sent on shotguns, sniper chips will be sent on 
sniper, yada, 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 yada. And the inner ring is specific to the weapon itself. Whenever you have unlocked a gun, any more gun blueprints that you would obtain for that gun automatically get recycled and can now be spent and invested into that gun to make it stronger on this inner ring. So legendary weapons are going to take quite a fair bit of time to increase their levels, but that's all part of the grind playstyle that is synced. The codex is something that you unlock as you begin progressing towards endgame content and to put this as easy to understand as possible, if you imagine an MMORPG styled skill tree, then this is what you're going for. Select what you want to passively add to your runner or to your companion and let the numbers do their thing in the background from here onwards. And then finally we have the runner mods. More specifically we have two to focus on. We got the legendary runner mods which are the gold ones and as of right here, right now in this video, we have something called red runner mods that have yet to be discovered and named. So give it a day or two and we will have their names but I'm just going to refer to them as exotics for now or just red runner mods. Now these runner mods have a very similar system to Warframe's Riven Rolling. Now knowing our backgrounds I know that most of you will understand exactly how this works from here onwards however if you don't let me explain. Legendary runner mods can be refracted to re-roll all four stats at once and you can choose to keep either the new rolls or back out and keep the current rolls that you have. Now I think it's a good system as with this many rolls it would feel horrible to lose out on it because you decided to chance a better roll. So with years of experience under my belt, I can adapt to this system pretty quickly. So guys, that's roughly about what we have in sync so far. It's got a little bit of everything. And if you're not taking this game super seriously, I genuinely believe that you can enjoy the game and get close to about 100 hours out of it quite casually. I'm not entirely sure what else they could add to the game down the line to make it more interesting. So I'm going to leave the floor open to your comments and feedback. With what you see so far and with what little time that you have in the game, what would you like to be added to make for a better PvE experience? The idea of increasing player party size to five or six and adding grander areas with more challenging mechanics and more bosses could count as a raid. Now that could be interesting as an example, but what do you think? And if all else fails and you've got nothing else left to do anymore, there is the PvPVE game mode that exists. And personally, I wouldn't sleep on it. It's got good replayability and it's kind of like a battle royale uh, with a shooter that means a shooter extractor in its own weird and wonderful way. Give it a try. But that's about it for the video today, guys. How are you finding sync so far? Again, I will echo that I do enjoy the free to play model at its base, and I personally like the experience. There is a bit of repetitiveness within the gameplay, but I definitely will be keeping an eye out to see what future updates they can go and add, more factions, new missions, all different kinds of types. But until then, guys, I will be seeing you in the next video.